Hi, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about replacing the GNOME notification daemon with another notification daemon. So typically, if you're using a window manager, you might use something like Dunst. Now, if we have a look at the GNOME notifications, you'll see one of the major problems is when you actually click this view to see the messages, you'll see the text is actually truncated and you can't read it. And if you click the notification, you'd think it'd expand it so you could actually read the bloody thing. But no, it actually dismisses it and nothing comes up here. So what we want to do is figure out how we can replace this notification system with our own one. So if you run Dunst in the terminal, if you have it installed, what you'll see is it prints out an error, um, an error message. And we have a couple of things here that I'm going to go through. The critical one down here is cannot acquire org free desktop notifications name is acquired by gnome shell with pid 7940 so the issue is dunst can't run because there's a dbus um sort of program called org not um org free and um, desktop notifications that is used for notifications and that's sort of already running under the GNOME shell. So what we need to do is actually kill that and start our own desktop notification daemon instead. Now the other couple of lines I want to uh, point out here is Dunst errors. Dunst does actually support Wayland, but it uses the ZWLR layer shell v1 protocol which is based on wl roots and isn't supported by um gnome shell uh, on ubuntu so even if you do run dunst on the gnome shell it's actually going to fall back to x11 so that's just something i wanted to mention there but what we're going to do now is run ps ux grep and that number seven nine four and what you'll see here listed is um, it's running under my user and what it's doing is it's running this command here user bin jgs um, gjs rather user share gnome shell org gnome shell notifications so this gjs is basically uh, it's running javascript so all of the interface of GNOME is built using JavaScript and CSS pretty much. Um, all the menus, that sort of thing, all the pop-ups. So it's running this JS and it's running this uh, file. So we could actually have a look at what that's running. So hang on, that user, uh, gnome.shell oh no sorry my bad user shell gnome shell org dot gnome shell notifications so you can see this is just what the actual script or whatever you want to call it contains so what we need to do is actually figure out a way to get this process ID uh, easily and then kill it in one go. And we want to do that automatically when we log in. So you might be tempted to use something like PSOX, grep, you know, grep for, um, you know, some of this text here and then pipe that through grep again to remove grep. But there's actually an easier option. If you use pgrep, with the dash F option, you can then actually, uh, if I just search pgrep and notifications, for example, notifications here, you see nothing comes up. It's not matching this here. But if I run G like that, it's going to list two processes. One's the org. Um, org gnome shell notifications the other is actually the screensaver but if you read the man page for pgrep 
there's a dash F option here. Full. The pattern is normally only matched against the process name when dash F is set, the full command line is used. So what that means is if we use pgrep with the dash F option, we can then search for any string in the um, of text in this command here. So we can actually come back. And if I do dash F, you'll see it now matches that process ID 7940. So what we can do is we can actually match against all GNOME shell notifications using the dash F option with pgrep. So that's how we can get the process ID, the thing we need to kill. Now, there's another program called pkill that also supports the dash F option. So we can do the same thing. We can just do pkill dash F and then all GNOME shell notifications and it will kill the... Um, notification so let me just go into this script so that's all we need to do to kill the gnome notifications p kill f single quotes org dot gnome dot shell dot notifications and that's going to kill that process for us so what we need to do is actually automate this we want to have this done automatically for us when we log in so that we can set up another um, notification daemon to replace um, the GNOME version. So what we're going to do is actually create a .desktop file that's going to be auto started. So what I'm going to do is actually go through this. So if we come to, first of all, a little note, if we come to the Arch Wiki about desktop notifications and you scroll down here, uh, you see here notification servers built in cinnamon deep in enlightenment gnome plasma use their own implementations to display notifications and it cannot be replaced uh, their notification servers are stored started automatically on login to receive notica notifications from applications via dbus but that's wrong at least for gnome you can kill it um and as far as i've you know in my little brief period of testing I haven't really noticed any issues once you start another notification server so what i'm going to do is actually come through the notes so the first step is actually creating the script that's going to kill the gnome notifications so what we do is we create a script called no no gnome notifications for example we call it whatever you want and then we make it executable then what we're going to do is move that script to use a local bin and that is a directory where you store your own script separately from the um, system installed binaries that would be in user bin so you put your custom scripts in user local bin or in your bin directory in your home directory but um, a lot of people haven't got that set up so this is just an easy way to do it move the script to user local bin next step is what we're going to do is create an auto start desktop file that is then going to run that script automatically when we log in and then kill the gnome um, notification so we can replace it with our own notification server so what we've got here is a desktop entry type application and exec and then the path to the script um, install location which is user local bin no gnome underscore notifications hidden true no display true and what that does is that sets it up so that it doesn't show up in your application launcher as a desktop file that you would run to open an application and we've got next next line here x gnome auto start enable equals true um, and then just name and comment and then basically all we need to do is move that file to dot config auto start reboot and then when you, after you've rebooted, if you run notify send test, what you'll see is in the terminal an error message saying gbus error org freebus. No, I won't read the whole thing here, but the name free B, um, freebsd notifications, uh, freebsd, free desktop notifications was not provided by any service files. So what that means is that there is no notification server running to receive the notification that you've just sent.
So that means that we've killed the GNOME notification server automatically on login by adding a script and a auto start desktop file that calls that script that then kills the GNOME notifications by using pkill dash f and that that gnome which was all gnome shell notifications so what i'm going to do is kill the notifications uh, for gnome and then actually run dunst and show you the error that you'll get with dunst so i'll switch back here I've got everything in place, um, but I can just kill the. I can just kill the notifications on the command line running this. So if I just copy that. So what I'll do is run across here and run notify send test. Okay, you can see the message pops up there test. Now if I run the command to kill the notification server it won't work um. okay we're getting that error now ebus error free free bsd dbus error service unknown the name org dot free bs oh, free bsd sorry i used to use free bsd so my brain's auto completing uh, notifications was not provided by any service file so we've killed the um, notification server now so what you could do is create another auto start file to auto start something else so what i'm going to do is actually run dunst and show you the errors that you'll get okay so what we're getting here is this error invalid version for global wl out um warning compositor and um, comp compositor doesn't support zwlr layer shell v1 and that is a shell protocol for wl root uh based um desktop you know tiny window managers like sway so that's not part of gnome shell so what's happening here is it's checking and it says okay it's not wl root based window manager desktop whatever um so it can't enable wayland because it hasn't got support for the version of wayland that gnome uses so what it's doing is it's going to fall back to x11 and it's got this mit screensaver missing on display one but if i run notified send test um was it not? Oh, it's coming up on the flipping other monitor. <laughs> yeah, oh, for God's sake. Did I have this? Let me just see if it's going to do it. Oh, for God's sake. We must have something set up in Dunst so that it's um, it's playing on the other monitor for some reason. Or, or that monitor got focused or something. Or other, I don't know. But it is actually showing up. Um, I'll just kill Dunst for a second. So that's how we can kill the no notifications up here. So no notifications. And sorry, I can, I'm not going to faff about switching monitors to just capture the notification, um, but it does show up. But the issue is that it's going to be a X Wayland application. It's going to be running under X11. So it won't be running under Wayland natively on GNOME. Um, so that's the issue with Dunst. So if we come across to the desktop notifications page of the Arch Wiki, there's a section here about different notification de um, demons that you can use. And I was just looking at Dunst there. Um, there's another one called Mako. Currently works on Sway. A lot of these things um if they support wayland they're only supporting the wl roots version 
so that means that you can't use them on gnome anyway um i think um you usually they'll they'll just refuse to start so you can have a look through this list here but a lot of them um will either be running under x11 so they'll be running under x wayland and not wayland and you can check that by running x eyes in the terminal and moving the um the cursor about and if the eyes in x eyes move that means it's a um x wayland or x11 application and if the eyes don't move then it's running under wayland um but these are the other a list of some of the other notification servers that you can actually use uh, so what I'm going to do is put links to this document here with the, the actual instructions. And what we have here is the script and the desktop file. So this is the script. So it's just one line, pkill-f org.gnome.shell notifications. That script goes in user local bin. And this is the desktop entry with exec and the path to the script set to hidden no display auto start enabled true and this goes in config dot auto start and once you put those two in place all you need to do is actually reboot and you'll see that the gnome notification daemon has been killed and you then will need to start another notification daemon i think because otherwise it may cause issues on the system if you don't have something running to receive the notifications so what i'm going to do next is actually have a look at um the notification server that i'm going to replace gnome notifications with and uh, it's not on this list um but it's a wayland application that you can customize and it's 400 lines of code and you can override bits of it and tweak it um but that's something to come and i'll have to um do a bit of work on that but this means that you can actually replace these annoying gnome notifications that you can't actually read in here and i showed you in a previous video um, how when you're using notify send by default the messages would be collapsed and you couldn't read them until you moused over them because there's actually a setting if I come in here notifications I created a desktop file for notify send in my local share applications and once I'd done that it shows up in settings notifications and you can enable this message show message content in pop-ups and what that does is that expands the message so that it actually shows the full message without having to mouse over it but <clears throat> the issue with the gnome notifications is as i said if you want to view you can't view a list of previous notifications once you've cleared them they're gone you can't actually read the notifications in this pop-up at all uh, because the text is all truncated uh, and you can't click on them to actually expand on them and, and view them so that's why i want to actually replace the built-in gnome notifications and i said it's really easy to do after a bit of detective work what we did was we first of all we ran dunst and it prints out that message saying it can't run notifications because there's another notification server running and it gave us the process id and from that what we did if we go back through the actual commands um so we ran dunst and then we ran psox with that process id and that actually gave us the um process id in the command that was being run which was first of all it was user bin j um, g j s which i think it's probably stands for something global j s i would imagine and then it was running this file here this org gnome shell notifications so once we knew that and after reading the pgrep manual we found the dash f option so pgrep pgrep dash f 
and um, if I run J, J G, what we'll see, I think if I run the dash L option, it shows the, yeah, it shows the thing here. So that's the actual screensaver, but the P grep dash F option allows us to search. So I can actually run, uh, should be, let's run saver, I think it is. Yeah. GDS screensaver is what it's called. Um, the other uh, GJS thing that's running. But the pgrap F option allowed us to match any part of the command that was being run so that we could then match on all GNOME shell notifications. Once we've done that, we could then substitute pkill for that pgrep. So pkill f the all gnome shell notifications kills it um so we can be really specific in what we're doing we don't have to run psox grep pipe it through grep um and then pipe it through grep again to remove the grep uh, um, process id get the id and then you know run um another command you know like kill and then the process id now uh, so that we can do it all in one line much easier and then once once we did that we just had this auto start desktop file so nice and easy all we got to do is basically download these two scripts a script and a desktop file so we come you come across the raw i'll put the links the direct links to the raw files here so you do come across save save that one um make the scripts ex executable Move it into place and then same thing with the um desktop file move that to config auto start reboot and when you run notify send you'll get this error message here and that basically means you've got no 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 notifications there's a bit of a tongue twister that one and you can then start another notification server so in the next video i'm going to be looking at my choice to replace GNOME notifications and I said it's Wayland. It will give you a complete log of all the notifications you can go back in. Um, it supports images and text, um, but it does need some work to actually make it a bit more usable. And, and, and that's gonna require a bit of hacking, but um, I think it might be an interesting choice. So that's all for now. And I'll put links to all this under the video and that's how you can stop the GNOME notifications and replace it with something else. <coughs> Excuse me. And here's a list of some of the notification servers that you can use. But a lot of these might not be in the Ubuntu repositories like Mako isn't in the Ubuntu repository. And as I said, some of these will only work um, as an X11 application using X Wayland. They won't be fully Wayland or if they do support Wayland, chances are they'll be using WL roots and won't work on GNOME anyway. So I'll put links to all this to the um, README here um, and the actual scripts that you need to download. But it only takes a minute. All you've got to do is download them, put them into place. You can see they're very simple. You can see what they do. Uh, put them into place, reboot, and it will kill the GNOME notification uh, server. And you can auto start applications. Um, come across to tweaks. So there's two ways you can auto start applications. You can use GNOME tweaks, and that will let you come here and actually select applications that have a desktop file so this method will only allow you to select an application as a graphical application that has got a dot desktop file that would typically be in user share applications or dot local share applications so that's the graphical way of creating an auto start file to auto start another um 
notification daemon, um, but said that's not going to work. Um, the things like dunce because it doesn't have a de desktop file. So if I open uh, the file manager here and press Control H, it will show hidden files, and you can come into dot config auto start and you can see here this is where the um, dot desktop file needs to go so what you can do is you want to start a um, another this you know notification server what you can do is simply copy um, this file you know and create it you know call it something like dunst and then change the line the exec line and the name and the comment to like dunst so put in the location to dunst you know it would be like user bin dunst and um so you'd have two desktop files in that auto start one that would run the no no notification script to um to use pkill dash f to kill the um no notifications and then you'd have another dot desktop file that would launch your choice of um notification server you want to use but as i said um i can get have, let me see if i can get this working in another terminal will it come up on this screen i oh, know i haven't got dunce running so if i just run dunce again I can't get the fucking um, notification to show up on this screen. Um, annoyingly. So yeah, you can you can replace the no notification with something else. But as I said, the issue with Dunst is it's going to run as an X11 application and not as a Wayland uh, not as a Wayland application. So you may have to have a look down here. But as I said, if you search for things like Mako. Um, they won't uh, be in the Ubuntu repositories. Um, some of these might be deprecated. This might be a bit old. And there's things like XFCE. Um, I have used that in the past, I think, um, instead of Dunst as a notification daemon um, on other desktops. I think I used to use that um, on something like i3 or something. But yeah, you got a long story short, this section up here, um, notification servers built in, you can't uh, be replaced. I'm not sure if the same applies to these other desktop environments, but the GNOME notifications run under your process, um, your user, so they're not running, um, you know, as root or anything like that. So killing them doesn't actually seem to have any ill effects, but you will need to start another notification server. Um, because otherwise it might sort of cause issues. But as I said, I put links to all this under the video and that's all for now.